think that video games can uh, replace standardized tests? Standardized tests are really kind of a mess in many respects. So they're um, they're asked to do like 10 different things. So you know what standardized tests are good for, if anything, is to giving you a really broad sense overall of someone is someone like way up here or way down here. They're actually really bad at making fine uh, distinctions. They're really bad for assessing teacher performance. They're really mm -hmm. bad. Actually, for assessing individual student performance, they're actually not very good at that either. So they're all bad. Yeah, they're actually bad at all of those <laughs> things. Um, <clears throat> the one thing they're good at is that they're, they're quick to administer and they're easy to scan, scan drawn grade, I guess. I know you probably have to answer this question a lot. I know you've had to answer it on NPR and stuff, mm -hmm. and you get, this, you get this kind of pushback. So what are some of the key arguments that, let's say, people who haven't, who haven't bought in on this make? Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the, the big thing I would do is actually show them uh, some of the new products for little kids, like the um, uh, LeapFrog's pen. Companies like LeapFrog have come up with tools to say, um, for early readers, to show that this is how many pages your kids read. They actually have little embedded quizzes, and you can say like, oh, your kid actually seems to be comprehending this or not. Let's go back to the beginning of your career, um, your first, your dissertation at Indiana mm -hmm. University on using Civ 3 to teach education, so yep. uh, or to teach history, rather. So at that time, um, you were kind of a pioneer in this field. Mm -hmm. And so in the last seven years, we've seen the field really expand. Can you talk a little bit about that? Did yeah. you anticipate that happening? Why and how has the field um, expanded? Yeah, so when I started this back at in, in Indiana, so when I started doing this back at in Indiana, there were really a handful of us. Um, uh, two of my uh, friends and colleagues, uh, Tony Beatrice and Ed Schneider, both of them were here, taught a games class at Indiana, in part because there were folks like Tom Gillespie who were studying games academically. And it, I was in, um, you know, in, in courses looking at what we were doing like with virtual worlds and some like 3D models and saying, gosh, what we can do on our PlayStation is just so much easier, kind of more compelling. Um, the way that game designers design for interactivity. But what I imagined happening, would there be this little sliver of like three of us that did that? Like it'd be like the novelty act in education, you know? Um, but a lot of things changed. I mean, one, I think the, the gamer generation has generally grown up and grown older. Um, companies, both as players and then as developers, and as uh, companies like Nintendo, for example, coming out uh, with the Wii, changing how we think about game experiences, opening up to new markets. So even, Things that seem simple like Brain Age is a great, that made a lot of change because people said you can sell someone the fantasy of kind of getting sharper and sell like 20 million copies, mm -hmm. right? That was not, that, that changed a lot, a lot of things for a lot of people. When you first started out, so I've heard you had to spend about a half hour at the beginning of every yeah. talk just kind of justifying Yes. Things. Yeah, I def yeah, it, it really. Uh, I just spent about a half hour talking to people and saying, "Look, I know you think these are evil and the cause of downfall of civilization, but if you bear with me for a few minutes." And it was things like at the first, it was things like you can make money playing EverQuest, and so money for some reason convinced people that this was you know <laughs> okay. If you can make money, it must be morally good. Um, but then there were things, you know, eventually things like uh, SimCity and Civilization, talking about them and saying, "Look." kids get the chance to build cities and lead them and we need to at least understand it even if we don't want to bring them into schools. What do you think are some of the best kind of projects going on right now? Some of the best games yep. and assessment projects? The best games and assessment projects right now, I think what they're doing is embracing a lot of rapid cycles of building, playing, testing, and building and doing it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that the commercial games industry does almost to a shocking level compared to some educators. Yeah. I'm pretty happy there's a project called Citizen Science that Filament Games built. I'm mm -hmm. partnering with them on that. And um, we've been doing a lot of very rigorous assessment work, trying to understand what about this game can be used for assessment and what can't. And I'm uh, encouraged, but, I but it's really tricky. One of the things that we're finding, for example, is that in a standard assessment, what you're supposed to do is give the assessment to an expert and then give it to a novice. And in theory, an expert will do much better than a novice. Now, they actually don't do this very often, but and still in theory, you know, give someone who's got a PhD in math, the SAT, and they should do better than your average 17 year old, right? Um, but what we're finding is, so all right, give our citizen science game, which is a game about lake, lake science, give that to a scientist and give it to a 17 year old. Well, the 17 year old does better sometimes than the lake scientist. <laughs> and so, uh, and partly because they, they, they <clears throat> tinker, they play, they muck around with it. Mm. They start learning from the game really quickly and they get good at it. Yeah. Whereas um, the scientists typically will kind of play at it, try a few things, get kind of lost. Um, mm. Now maybe it's just a usability problem, but my, I suspect it's a more of a literacy problem where they don't know how to go in, tinker, play. They don't have that sort of positive self-efficacy where you just keep trying and just do it. Like that's how you learn through a game.